Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise Andrews and I make new videos every Tuesday talking about my post-grad stresses, successes, and creative endeavors. And for this video, I wanted to do a self-portrait of myself as a gift to myself for my birthday. So um, I recorded the process of putting this all together that I was working on um, over the past week and I'm excited to share it with you. So um, thanks so much for watching and let's get into the video. So what I'm doing right now is going into Photoshop and cutting myself out from the image that I took. I kind of took a few reference pictures and I posed holding this stuffed animal that I have that kind of looks somewhat like an armadillo, although it wasn't, you know, quite the right shape. It was nice to have for referencing things. And then I went and looked for images of an armadillo. Um, they're just one of my favorite animals. Kind of my thought process with making this portrait is um, looking back on, I guess, more traditional portraits you would see um, like at a museum or kind of these European things where they're like holding um, animals, holding um, objects that like are important to them. I, this is kind of just a hodgepodge of a self-portrait. But <laughs> anyway, I did the armadillo, photoshopped him in there more or less. Then I also found a little baby alligator because I also, you know, really like alligators. And I thought it would make for a funny and cute little portrait. And I was also looking forward to just drawing an alligator in an armadillo. So right now I'm just kind of very loosely drawing in sort of where, where I want like the tail to be and the rest of the alligator. And now um, I didn't exactly record the initial sketching very much, but I basically did a grid on my paper and I did that also on the printed out image of my drawing that I wanted to do. And that just helped me make sure everything was in the right place. I didn't want to just go in and trace it. I wanted to actually, you know, challenge myself to do the drawing out on, you know, a piece of paper without the, you know, light box. But anyway, um, this was really fun to do and I enjoyed using a grid system because I haven't done that in quite some time. I used to do it a lot more whenever I was in high school. So I think that this turned out pretty good. I think I had to go in later though and fix up the face a little bit using my light box because that is something I wanted to look perfect and look like me because that's something I tend to struggle with when I'm making art. I don't spend a ton of time you know, practicing drawing people in the figure, that's not like a priority for me right now, but I really enjoyed um, just this experiment. And this is one of the first self-portraits that I've done that I actually feel very satisfied with, I guess, how I drew my face. So once the sketch was completed, I went in and started inking, which is by far my favorite part of this painting's process and just any process on art that I do. I am definitely, you know, I concentrated on drawing whenever I was in college in my art degree. And so I think that definitely shows that it's something I really love to do. And yeah, I was really happy with this kind of black and white drawing by the end of it, but it was also nice to go in with watercolor as you'll see later. But just getting these little patterns and details in on the armadillo was so much fun. And I think it turned out great. And then at this point, I, you know, I struggle with color a lot, you know, I mostly, like I said, focused on drawing and focused on black and white drawing in my time in college. So most of my experience is with that, but I've been trying to put a lot more energy into learning color more and how to make really good um, flowing color palettes. And so I wanted, before I went in to start painting, I wanted to actually sit down and sort of plan out what I wanted this painting to look like in terms of color. Again, I was just spending this entire day having a ton of fun with, you know, picking out the colors, making sure everything looked perfect. I haven't really spent this long on a piece in quite some time, like maybe since I was in college working on projects. So this was really fun to 
you know, spend all day just working on this one thing. And I think I even went into working on it on other days as well. It's fun to take your time with things sometimes. But yeah, uh, I wanted to go with, and I mean, I guess I chose a pretty complex color palette. I'm pretty sure it ended up kind of working out. I had a lot of problems with it, but I really do love like cool colors um, and pinks as well. I like my favorite colors, I would say are like blue, pink, and purple. And so I wanted to incorporate these into the art, but then also like, there's the color of the animals. What do I do with that? Anyway, um, so uh, basically this is just, you know, me working on the colors, kind of trying to solve the puzzle. This is all I really want to do tonight. I didn't even want to jump the gun and work on painting, but I did. Um, I'm just doing the basic bit. I did like kind of a bit of an underpainting in this kind of mentioned to pink color and did a skin tone and some of the background wall. I'm going off of this as a general reference. I think it's got good color balance. Ignore the, the little nose. Here, but um, uh, yeah, I think I think everything looks balanced and good and flows together. It's all a lot of cool colors. I think the browns are the only thing I might have a problem with, but I might try to match this brown to this brown or make this brown a little more purpley, sort of like the curtain. So we will see. And then this green kind of stands out a little bit. Anyway, um, we'll figure it out. We'll make it good. So I went ahead and continued to paint a little bit more on this piece. I painted the alligator like you're seeing right now. I think I added some details elsewhere, but um, just wanted to get some of the initial flat colors down so I could kind of see the direction that it's going in. Now around this time was whenever I started having some more issues with it and the piece got tricky. I feel like this happens in a lot of art that I make. I just kind of run into some problems and I have to make decisions to solve the puzzle. That's kind of how my process works. Um, a lot of that time inv that involves, you know, going over my lines again with a black ink like micron pen and that tends to solve a lot of the problems but then sometimes I have to just try things out and see if they work and you know watercolor is somewhat forgiving but also not super forgiving for just like trying things out and so um, you can see me kind of trying to understand how I want to do the curtains and you can see me thinking a lot about what my next move is and praying that I do not mess it up.
And at this point, I was more or less satisfied with the piece. I think I needed kind of some space from it to really know that it pretty much works. Um, and so right now I'm just cutting it out and using my little Cricut, Cricut um, cutter. So that was a really useful thing to have and to do. And so then, yes, here's the reveal. I will show you now. Um, this is the final painting. Um, it is definitely interesting, definitely kind of strange, but um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It was really fun to do. And yeah, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.